Hello friends. This one is by request. And the basic idea is what if you are feeling like you're trapped in the city and you want to move out to the country? Yeah, thanks for requesting that anytime. It's really fun to have videos to make that we know you really want to hear. Uh, and this is just our uh, own journey that we've had and some of the things we've learned from it. And the first thing we have to say is that we are not saying cities are bad and the country is good. It's just simply that that was the request was if I wanted to move out into the country from the city, what are some things that I should be thinking? I've had to have that explained to me by some friends that live in the city because well, I, I'm not very much of a city I'm person. I'm not sure if you can tell, but Kenton and cities, not super yeah. big mix there, good mix. But she has shared with me that there's amazing things in the city. There's amazing community. A lot of the preconceptions that I had are not necessarily true. But we also know that there's, there's a lot that happens out here in the country that just isn't available in the city. And, and so, vice versa. And vice versa, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think probably what we're talking about here is it's going to have a deeper message to it isn't simply about how can I move out into the country it's really about the soil that you are growing in mm. as a being and what soil is going to nourish you and nurture you the most how can you get that it might be not a move but it might be a career that you're stuck in it might be a relationship that you're stuck in whatever it is we're going to be using the framework of moving from the city to the country, how to do that. It's gonna seem like there's a lot of specifics, but you're gonna find that a lot of the, the deeper strategies that are presented will apply to almost any move that you make in your life. I think it's also important to point out that in the beginning of this video, we're going to do some, we're gonna have a little bit more of an organic kind of free back and forth format at the end, we'll present some bullet points to make everything feel practical. I think streamlined. it's also important to remember that everything is a spectrum. So we might say move into the country. For you, that might mean you just want to move to a more rural or a smaller town and you might still want to live in the city so you can bike places, you can be close to live music at the cafe. So to some people that might be a big enough shift and for other people it might be a cabin that's you know 40 miles from anywhere and you can just wake up to the birds and, and that's it so it's a spectrum too yeah that spectrum is really important because you can you can live in the country and live a very consumer-based life it can be really expensive you can live in the city and it can be very consumer-based and very expensive you can live in the country and subsist a lot of foraging and other things yeah. you can live in the city and be a freegan and get a lot of your food out of dumpsters and so there's there's various ways to live in any environment but we're going to be speaking basically from personal experience yeah. and use the example of what we've done in our life and what's important to us so one of the biggest things we've learned and we've lived in a couple of different places we moved to colorado at one point we've lived in hawaii very different environment is that you will be bringing with you your perspective on what you think about people, on what you think about your life, what you think about the experiences that you have. And that perspective is something you should examine before you make any kind of big change in your life. What is your perspective? Because if you have a perspective that isn't really working for you, you're going to bring it with you and it's wherever you go or whatever you do, it's not gonna work yeah super. <laughs> i don't know that sounds bad <laughs> danger perspective or it won't work but there is some definite truth we've experienced too about why do we keep running into this oh we are the ones that change we can't just change our environment we need to change inside as well oh, so <laughs> essential because often people are going to leave a relationship they're going to leave a job leave a place and then they find same things happen over too. and over why is this happening oh. <laughs> so this we need to understand this that we bring this perspective lens with us and when we make a change there's an opportunity to change that perspective lens because a lot of our perspective lens has to do with habits of of being mm -hmm. so if i am going to work i'm seeing the same people every day and feel caught in this job 
that's going to strongly affect my perspective lens. So when I make a shift, I have a special opportunity to change that perspective lens. But if we don't think about the perspective lens right. and we just move to a new place or try to make some change thinking that's going to fix things or make things better, to no avail. Yeah. So a good place to start okay. would be, what is it that keeps us in a city environment or on the larger scale in something that we are feeling isn't suiting us anymore? And that's a good question. You can almost think of that as a trap or a pitfall. Mm. What is that? Because with a city, there can be the illusion there's more people, so there's probably more job opportunities, more child care, more health care, you know, more food, just more options, more, more. <laughs> right? Yeah. And so leaving that can, you know, lead us to think, oh, gosh, what will I do? But I'm, I'm wondering if you feel that that is accurate. I, <laughs> I would say no, in the sense okay. that we can look at any of those, those things. So in a city, take child care. Yes, there are going to be way more child care official places. Mm -hmm. But in the country, as we'll talk about more and more here, there is a, an interweb, a connection of people in the country and rural places in general, where it's relatively easy to find somebody who will watch your child on a regular basis or just sporadically. Healthcare, yes, there's going to be the big you know amazing hospitals in the in the city not here in the country but you live more healthy often in the country mm. there's you're getting better sleep there's not light pollution there's well, again depends on who you are true. we're talking about someone who would like to move to the country so there's a lot of different have you seen my biases <laughs> I just know that there's people who love the city and I'm really grateful oh, yeah. for them because they live there and then I don't have to. <laughs> I don't mean that in a mean way. I really don't. There's a lot to enjoy about the city and there's a lot of people who love it. And I also have talked to a lot of people who are trapped in the city uh, for one reason or another and don't want to be there. And, you know, that's okay too. That's what this video is about. And just take cost of living, for example. We were just visiting relatives and they were talking, they all live in the city and they were all talking about, oh my gosh, prices are outrageous, prices are outrageous. And for us, the way that we live, we have some nice secret places that we can go to make things more affordable. I haven't noticed anything at all. There's, for there's me, no inflation. It's, it's not happening, which is you know, potentially about where I live, right? Yeah. So I'm not sure that's and always connections. true. Connections are super important. That's probably the other main message the relationships yeah yeah now i'm going to suggest that there's a a deeper a real reason that we often feel trapped subliminal messaging in the city <laughs> <laughs> the emergency that we feel trapped in the city that we feel trapped in a job whatever it is and that is a combination of fear and habit and those mm -hmm. two forces work together in us often to keep us in a situation that isn't serving us. So I'll use the example of a really crappy relationship. It's, it's say it's not abusive or anything, but it's just it's just really crappy. You haven't been happy for five years mm -hmm. in this relationship. You don't look forward to coming home. But the thought of going through a divorce, oh, yeah. who I mean, messy, messy. There's oh, so who's much. Who's going to get tape. what? What's going to happen with the kids? Right. That just feels like so and much. And all the emotional stuff that goes along Ugh. with that. And then rebuilding a new life. Yeah, I mean, we stay, humans stay in our patterns just because they're comfortable, even if they're uncomfortable. Yeah. You can deal with it. Eventually, you just get used to that rock that's ja you know stuck in the side of your boot. And you're like, okay. Yeah, and that's, that's that force of fear and habit. So those work together. But there's the unknown. There's the... It's just easier just to deal yeah. with the Judgment. daily grind. Judgment from others. And to go forward. Your friends, oh, your sure. family. What are you thinking? You know, why are you making this change? Everything is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, step into my life for a moment. Now I feel <laughs> I must be doing this for a reason. <laughs> One of the things that's maybe scary for some people is just that the country does have less people and more space and wild animals. 
<laughs> yeah, if we're talking about this specific example of moving from city to country, you think about people. The, the city just has a huge density of people. We don't have that in the country. And so that can very easily make us think, hmm, there's not going to be opportunity. There's not going to be... It's going to be dark. It's going to be quiet. It's, yeah. Yeah. Hello, and, alone. <laughs> <laughs> and so it definitely can seem like that. But as we'll keep coming back to, in the country, there tends to be more a connection between people. People are are just more dependent on each other. It's easier in the city to just live in your own apartment. You can go right down to the market. You can go right over there to the bar, whatever your thing is. You can just go do that stuff on your own. In the country, you know, if your car breaks down, right. you, you got to call your neighbor yeah. and say, hey, can you? <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit like Laura Ingalls Wilder, the whole prairie pioneer then your neighbors you have to help each other and you know that means setting differences aside if there are and realizing hey we are human beings and we need to help each other survive i did just want to jump in and say that i do know of neighborhoods in the city where people are very close-knit they very much help each other they're super there for each other so that definitely takes place in the city as well again you're not saying the city is bad and the country is good it's just different places are different, you know, and certainly there probably are places in the country where people don't help each other. I haven't experienced that so much, but I'm sure there are. Yeah. Yeah. And it's probably just, I think my point is, it's just easier in the city to be kind of on your own if that's your choice. You can yeah. do it in the country. There's definitely hermits that live out in the woods or whatever, but it's more difficult just because of the distance and the length between you and yeah. other things. So we understand what traps us in the city. How do we, how do we get out of that? And there's a, you know, as usual, there is a regular way to look at things. You're gonna go on to some realty places and, and look, and you're gonna learn about the communities. The school district, the crime rate, the per capita income, whatever, blah de blah. Right, which you can look at. Yeah. And, but that does not give you the heart of a place. Yeah. And yes. we want to know if we're going to go move to some place, if we want to know that this is really going to be the soil that's going to nurture us, we need to know the heart of that place. Yeah, it seems to me that most places have an overall feel to them when you go there. Uh, and I don't know, I always like to think, how does it make me feel? When I'm here are the people friendly overall because you can have a couple of you know somebody can have a bad day but do you find yourself saying oh I, you know I kind of like it and there's those cute little shops if we go into town and oh look you know this is here for us and there's a great opportunity for the kids um, so each place is gonna have an overall feeling to it but then you might encounter some things that say oh wow well groceries at the co-op are super expensive oh it's too bad I just really like it here but you have to realize that every place also has a layer down it's more than just skin deep there's more to it and that's where you if you do it right you can start to find the insiders kind of local version of what it's like to live there yeah I would say that every place has I think of it like a pie there's this this outer crust which is what 90% of people are going to experience in a place, even people that have lived there for quite some time. But then there's the berries down inside the pie. <laughs> a berry pie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that is what happens when you start making some deeper connections with the local population and with a part of the rural scene, if you will, that is not necessarily available to everybody. And if you want to move out into the country, I think this is your biggest your biggest key to moving out in the country is to see past that outer layer, see into the insider's version of that location. And that's going to open up so many opportunities that are not there if we're just following the, the standard yeah. version of things. Yeah. What we're going to do here is we're going to do a, a step by step bullet point example following our journey and 
this should take you along and make everything we've set up till now much more clear. Okay, step one. Step one probably is what do you want? You know? I mean, which is easier, <laughs> I mean, is more difficult sometimes than we think. Yeah, to easier understand. to say, oh, well, what do I want? I want this or I want that. But it's, it's one of those things that you should probably sit down and write a little bit about or have a family discussion. For us, we wanted the proverbial land of milk and honey, <laughs> which is true down here, living with the Amish. We definitely get our milk and honey from them. Uh, but we wanted a place that was safe for our kids. We wanted a community of like-minded people. And that meant people who love nature, who like foraging, where good food that is grown conscientiously, where they live. And we wanted it to also have some town feel. When we go to town, we want to have there be some nice places we can take our friends or our relatives. And what else? Yeah, I think we knew that we needed to have some big areas of nature mm -hmm. available to us. At the same time, like you said, we wanted a town nearby that was that had some some energy to it mm -hmm. so that wasn't run down and depressed but had interesting artists had a good farmers market mm -hmm. a good food co-op we were looking for a local food scene that we could move closer to those goals of sourcing more and more of our food very locally uh, like you said because we had kids, we really wanted a place where there were other kids yeah, and where we could feel safe having our kids just wander wherever they wanted yeah. to go. So coming up with that list for yourself, and this takes some soul searching, looking inside and saying, what is it that's really important to me? Mm -hmm. And what is not? And that will start to, to forge a a lens that we can look through that will help us to see more properly what might be a really good place for us. And it's more complicated, you know, each person is different. For example, we're blessed that we can work from home, that we can homeschool our kids. Part of your journey might be deciding, I'm going to switch jobs. We're going to be moving someplace where we aren't spending a crazy amount on rent or mortgage. I could afford to have more time and so maybe part of your list will be things such as having more time for myself or my family and you might have to also kind of strategize about how that's going to happen yeah. so it can be fun though if you think of it as a puzzle that you're all solving together or you you know personally i say all because i'm a family but everybody's different so number two 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 is doing a bit of research but yeah not just the statistics if you can narrow down to, let's say you live in uh, Minneapolis and you want to become rural. So you're going to look at a certain range around the city. If you want to stay close to Minneapolis, let's say you have friends and family there and start to look at those different communities. One of the best places to do this is actually most cities have a magazine mm -hmm. um, or n a number of magazines. So, there can be food magazines, they can be cultural art kind of magazines, but often they will showcase a community, a rural community, and you can get a little feel for it. Yeah, definitely. And you know, I mean, there's Chamber of Commerce websites, so you can just get a feel for what a, a visitor would see, but then you can get a feel what is there for you. And you know, one of my favorite places to do research is, uh, well, I guess this would require visiting, would be uh, coffee shops and... Yeah, yeah, that would be number three. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I can't help it. <laughs> yeah. But also connecting with anybody that you know who lives in the area, who has visited that area, who lives close by, because talking to people who spend their time there is a great way to go too. That's what we did in the case of Hawaii. We just started connecting with people that seemed like-minded and who were willing to you know, share their experiences and their their expertise with us about living there yeah so we looked at a number of communities that were <clears throat> you know we have family in the Twin Cities of, of Minnesota in that general area so we looked at places that were kind of in Minnesota Wisconsin mm -hmm. and as we looked we would narrow in 
on different communities and try to learn everything we could about them. And a lot of times we could just disclude things because it, it just didn't feel mm -hmm. right superficially. But we tried to narrow it down. And for us, we narrowed down to two communities. Way back when we took you on our adventure to Winona, yep. and we were looking at Winona and all the area communities around Winona. And we were looking over at Viroqua. And so we had narrowed it down to, I won't say just two, because there's a lot of surrounding communities mm -hmm. around these, these two main places. But we had narrowed it down to maybe five, six, seven communities that seemed, oh, these might be the, the towns mm -hmm. that we would want to be close to. Once you've narrowed that down, then we can move to number three, which is visiting or doing more in-depth research. Yeah. And that is what's really fun is going and staying, getting a feel for things, checking out if there's a food co-op. You know, looking at the bulletin boards at coffee shops and food co-ops and places like that, even if it isn't stuff that you're directly interested in, gives you a sense of what does this community do? And you can see, oh, look, you know, they're having a, a fundraiser for this family. They're, you know, these people are putting on a, a play in the park for kids. You know, what is there uh, available? And then if you have specific interests, you know, check out if you really love sports, what's the sports scene, you know, go to a local bike shop or sporting goods shop. I mean, check out if there's an art store and start talking to the people who work there and say, you know, this, what do you think of this town? You know, what's, what do you love about it? What's challenging? You know, we're considering maybe moving here. Would you say it's a good place for a family or, you know, ask questions, meet some people and see what they're like. What do they share with you? What do you learn? Now, <laughs> Some of us have kind of social phobias, or so this can sound ooh, scary, but there are a couple keys here to this. And one is those boards. Yeah. Those, when we say board, we mean a uh, in a in a co-op. There might be one. There might be one in the local bookstore. Print shops often have mm -hmm. them. Um, sometimes stores will have them. Banks will sometimes. Mm -hmm have them up yeah. even especially credit unions and these local boards where people can post yeah. a their bulletin board a bulletin board yeah are magic mm -hmm. you will find more opportunities and stuff there that will give you a feel for that community probably than any yeah. other resource that you use I think they tell you what the locals are doing with their life and and just kind of the nature of the people that live there does it tend more towards arts and you know theater and things or you know it, I mean just all manner of different things it really does give you a pulse for what happens with the locals and you know if you can't visit every place because hey you can't afford to fly to these three different places you can still call places and say hey and do the same thing you know you it's I mean people help each other and if you're going to move to a town where people help each other then you want to be able to talk to the person who's going to help you at the you know at the co-op or the sports goods store so if you can't have a good conversation with a few of those people <laughs> then it might tell you something about the people that are there yeah we had to do that with our Hawaii move so we obviously couldn't just go visit so that was not affordable for us and you may be in the city and you may not even be able to afford to you know go down and visit a nearby community it just might not be workable so this is another option is to use the internet use social media use phone calls in why we connected with landowners with farmers mm -hmm. uh, the main dnr guy we connected oh, with nice. there really nice uh, yeah he, <laughs> he was a nice guy <laughs> <laughs> very super helpful um and uh, head of a ecological organization thinking of Anne. Yeah, yeah. Or was Anne. And, and so we made these connections that made it feel like when we went there sight unseen, we already had a little community of people who were eager to meet us and who we had connected with. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to jump back to those boards. I can't leave those quite <laughs> yet. Because, so an example, if we were going to go into one of our message boards places, we would see houses for sale. Rentals. Or, pla or places to rent, yep. mm -hmm. work trade options, or people who had services for sale, um, babysitter, um, missing cat, 
<laughs> uh, play coming up for the holidays, a baked goods sale at a local church. Groups right. that are getting together to do oh, foraging or mm -hmm. art yeah. or... Yeah, oh. I mean, there's a kind of a local artisan nature school. They'll have their classes posted there. Um, just all kinds of different things. And remembering that you can post stuff on those boards yeah. too. So you can always write up, you know, this is a place where you can write out your situation mm -hmm. and put it up on a bulletin board and say, hey, I'm looking for a place. I'm looking to work on a, on a farm and here's my skills. Yeah, you know, out here, there's a lot of networking that goes on. So one of the first things we do when we're looking for something, um, because we're kind of still relatively new to the area, is we'll ask our different neighbors, hey, do you know anywhere where we could have our shoe repaired? Uh, and instead of trying to find it online, we just ask people and they go, oh yeah, there's this store, you just go past that other store and you know, you go up the flight of stairs, this really nice old lady, just ring the bell. I mean, you learn stuff by networking because people know things the longer they live here, people start to know stuff. It's really fun. It is fun. And you spoke already about going into specialty shops, little local kind of shops and places. These are the places where you're going to find people that are really integrated into the community. Mm -hmm. And here's another secret. If you have a niche interest, so let's say I, oh, I was into fly fishing and I tie my mm -hmm. own, yeah, my own flies. There's a little shop in town. Yeah. It's a little fly fishing shop. And that is a place where I could go. I could connect with that person. Mm -hmm. I'm probably going to have that person to myself for a while. And that's where you can start to build community interweavings, yeah, <laughs> interconnections. Definitely. Now, one secret to doing this, to communicating with people, and this is where I'm going to drop that you and I are planning on a new course, video oh, course. Gosh. I don't know what you were going to say. <laughs> that we're putting so we didn't on. talk about this beforehand. <laughs> Which is going to be on relationships. Yeah. You know, we've been together for 30 plus years mm -hmm. now and we are totally in love with each other. And I was going to kiss you right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I've learned so much about because it wasn't like that in the beginning. We went through a lot of rough stuff. Oh, yeah. So uh, so anyway, that's that's a course that we're planning. But one thing that we're going to point out in there is that there's a power to being vulnerable. Mm, yeah. And so if you approach somebody and you sort of try to pretend that you are a local already yeah, or something. I already know about that place, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Much different than if you go in and <clears throat> talk to someone. I have a terrible frog in my throat. <laughs> talk to someone and say, you know, I'm totally new here. I don't really know what I'm doing. Here's my interest, but I'm, I'm, here's my skills. I'm interested in moving here. Is there any help you might be able to give me? You're probably going to find people, you know, not always. You're going to find people that will be like, oh, whatever. But, <laughs> <laughs> but in general, if you are vulnerable, people will step in and be willing to help you out. And it takes a lot of courage, of course, to be vulnerable. But if you can do it, there's great power in that. All right, number four. What is it? Four. Four. Is actually making your oh, right. your move. And there's right. tons of logistics here, which we couldn't go into because right. they're just individual mm -hmm. for each person. But when you actually make your move, whether you're going to rent and just be there for a while or you're going to purchase something, whatever it is, it's really important to remember. Yeah, try not to take the city with you. If you are moving from the city because you don't want to be in the city and you don't want necessarily the life that you've created there, try not to bring it with you. It's kind of that perspective thing. Um, but it can happen. We've seen it happen where people have thought, I want to live in the country, but they bring the way they've lived in the city out to the country. And it's very difficult, I think, to maintain that, you know, drive to town all the time and try to, you know, there's a, a certain pacing that you can keep up in the city because there are so many more things. It's just easier to keep that pace going. But in the country, it just takes more energy to do that kind of pacing. Yeah. And that's where knowing what's important to you 
is essential. And then moving to a place that's going to make sense. So if you love going to a tavern every night, you don't want to be 30 miles from the tavern because you're going to become exhausted financially and yeah. mentally and energetically going back and forth yeah. every night to that tavern. You want to live close to that tavern, close to town. If you want to be out and away from people, then you want to get away from that town so that you can have that privacy around you. The rural world is different in many, many ways. But as you said, we can bring the city with us in the same way we talked about in the beginning. You can bring your lens with you wherever you go. Yeah. And that's going to shape everything you experience. So that might be an interesting thing before you go too far in your journey is to say, hmm, what are some of the things I'm looking to leave behind? And consider not just, oh, well, I want it to be, you know, more nature or this or that, but I want to slow down a little, or I want to be able to, speaking of nature, take more hikes. So make sure that, you know, you find that for yourself and that you're aware. I don't want to bring, you know, I'm working 40 hours a week. Now it's 50. I'm going to keep that going while I'm out in the country. You know, if, if you have things you want to leave behind, kind of pay attention to what those are so that you can be aware when you go that you're not bringing them with you. We knew we wanted to be able to pay more attention to <clears throat> this work. Mm -hmm. So our videos, our books, connecting with you. We wanted to forage more. Mm -hmm. We wanted to start growing some of our own food. We wanted to have more sunshine. <laughs> That's why we're further, <laughs> further south. Because I said I need more sunshine and less snow. We're not even snow yet. I, I mean, actually, I love winter. Don't get me wrong. But up north where we were before, it was a lot of winter and it was cloudy a lot. Anyway, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I just couldn't help it. Oh, my gosh. More community. And so we, we knew what we were after. And once we moved here, mm. for instance, we were very interested in Amish. And we had uh -huh. an inkling yeah. that if we could connect with these people, we would tap into a community of people that would have knowledge and resources that they could share with us that just wouldn't be available in in our regular life. And sure enough, that's been yeah, very true. Yeah, very magical. You know, one of the big things about making that move is to be prepared for knowing what level of connection you want. It's easier, I think for me, it's easier in a city because there's so much going on to just kind of try to drown stuff out or to give people their privacy. You know, there might be a conversation going on over here and one over here and I'm trying not to, to listen in because I want them to have their privacy. So I, I'm doing this, which is kind of the blinders. But for me out in the country, there's far fewer people. I find myself wanting to be engaged more, to want to learn more about my neighbors, to want to help you know, reach out and that sort of, at least in the community we're in, it's very much based on personal relationships. It's based on connection. It's based on that networking that we talked about where you do reach out and you say, hey, how's it going? And of course you have to be, at least we do have to be prepared to take a bit more time to hear your neighbor's story and they yours. So it is a little bit slower paced. What do they call it in Hawaii? Talk, talk story. Talk story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's a reality out here too. The more we connect with people, the more we get into the berry of <laughs> the pie. <laughs> Matt's gone from places to purchase things so we can get food very inexpensively here because we now have connection with farmers and Amish folk yeah. where we can get food and honey and beeswax for making candles and yeah you know, all of sorts things. of things that are would be just out of our price range yeah. i think um if we were living a different sort of life where we didn't have those connections learning skills we're getting to learn driving um, yeah. we've learned leather working we know how to drive a car yeah. but right <laughs> driving a carriage surrounded by neighbors that are right with us when it comes to foraging so we can go out and we can learn from them they can learn from yeah. us oh, so we can much go on and on really <laughs> yeah and that's really going to be the big big game changer if you decide to go rural is connecting yourself in and 
got, said that many times here in this video, but only because it's so, so important. The more you reach out to people and make those connections, the more the rural world will open up to you in amazing ways. It, it's, it's amazing out here. I mean, for us, this we're, is a dream come true. We're definitely in the right soil. It's so wonderful and beautiful. And each person's story is going to be different, but it's just so satisfying when you live someplace that you feel your kids can be safe, you're safe, people are like-minded, neighbors are helpful. I mean, where we are, we have neighbors that have differing opinions on certain things. They are still our neighbors. They still make sure the neighborhood is safe for our kids. They still stop and talk to us. They still share their bounty with us because in some ways, all that stuff up here, that's kind of belief system and everything is second place to making it. And even though, yes, we have running heat and you know we have electricity, that can go out. You can get into difficult situations. If you don't have a wood burning stove where we live, you can be in <laughs> trouble. And so in a weird way, it's still helping each other survive is the most important thing. Caring for each other. Yeah, you were bringing up someone we know who lives out west and is very uh, <coughs> kind of liberal minded mm -hmm. and lives in a very conservative community in the mountains of Wyoming. Uh, you know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> but has awesome connections yeah. with her neighbors. And there is not that, that friction. Right? In the rural communities, at least in our experience, I mean, that's I, not Right, we don't experience that, that. Again, probably in certain places it does. That's probably not where you want to move then. Yeah. <laughs> Just, <Yeah>. you know. <laughs> <clears throat> so remembering, rural communities ha have this huge spectrum. They can be really unpleasant places. So famously around here, there can be a lot of meth yeah. out in rural communities. So people come from the cities and set up meth houses and such. And so yeah. you, you must research the places where you're going to be. And here's one last point about this, is that the local community you're in is important. Yeah. So where we like are... Micro-local. Yeah. Yeah. We are, you know, in a small community, all the neighbors here who are of, of differing opinions, but live really well together. Mm -hmm. There's there's a guy that goes around on his four-wheeler. He's always packing heat and kind of <laughs> watches the... the community watches out oh yeah he's he's really he's vital to yeah. the community actually yeah. everybody feels vital each person has an important place place i mean yeah as we said kids <laughs> can roam it's yeah. just yeah so finding that little local community because local communities kind of protect it's a neighborhood themselves. i call it a neighborhood yeah this is what it feels like you know and that doesn't extend super far and wide but wide enough that I feel as though I could go to any person's house and I could knock and you know they would know me or, or know of me if it was a little further out and they would just immediately say, okay, what's going on? Yeah, I wanna hear from any of you out there who have also moved, let's just for the sake of this video say from the city to the country um, or a move that you really enjoyed that put you from one place into a place you really, really are thriving what are some of the things that you've learned? What are some tips or tricks that you would share with other people that could help put them in a similar situation? Share down in the comments, my friend. All right. Yeah, thank you also for being part of our community. That's one thing to remember is that we have a wider community here too. It's really important in this day and age, we also get to connect through technology. And so when you move someplace, it's nice to still to have that. So I'm grateful that you're part of our community. So much love to you.